Hey, what's up, my peoples, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, which I wanted to share with you a long time ago, this is the video that so many people was asking me about my plastic. Yes, my plastic surgery. So I wanted to share this video, the process of my plastic surgery, which I got to document a little bit of it. So I wanted to share with you this process so when i look from this oh to this yes and now we're giving face look at this makeup look this is so pretty this is one of the makeup looks that i am doing content and whatnot and i was like let me just take advantage of this and make a beautiful look and let me just do this video that I wanted to share with you, but I haven't had the chance to share the video. And luckily I got to document it. So I wanted to share with you the process of me before the surgery and then the day of the surgery and after the surgery, the trauma behind the surgery and all of the above. Have in mind that this video, it's going to be showing you a little bit of blood or type of like surgery and stuff and I look like a monster in the process but you're going to be experiencing what I got to experience and I got the honor to share this okay. video that I wanted to have like documented for like history like storyline of my life and also to share with you loved ones and friends and everybody that <clears throat> find out my surgery some people were like you look the same some people were like you look different i mean there's a big change and a bit different and it was so many procedures on one procedure it was like 10 procedures of the surgery so i'm going to be explaining a little bit in the process of this video um hopefully you could just like enjoy and see what i went through thank you so much for tapping into my video and without further ado why you subscribe to my channel let the show begin okay so in this video we're going to be talking about a few things and one of the things that I wanted to share is that doing a plastic surgery is very complicated and very difficult. So there's a lot of things happening and a lot of preparation. So, so we finally here. We're, um, I already saw the doctor. Uh, we're already here seeing the um, physician. I already went through all the information. I have the documents here. Um, I am basically, uh, I'll say today it's Friday. I am like five days away from surgery and I am so excited. I saw Dr. Lee every time I see him, it's really exciting. I forgot to film him, um, but I'll make sure I'll record him a little bit the day of the surgery and the day, like the week later when I take off all my bandages and stuff. Let me just take off my mask because there's not like, you know, there's nobody here. I'm just waiting for the physician, like I said. And here I'm just going through the, um, the plastic surgery information, which is going to be on the apartment first floor and whatnot with Dr. Lee James. And I'm so excited. I am so excited. And I'm so nervous. I am so nervous. <laughs> I am so nervous. I don't know what's up. Oh my god. I'm gonna have a new face. <gasps> I can't wait for the transformation. For the transformation. Honey, I can't wait for my new face. 
I mean, at least I get hasta la línea, even though the wrinkles are gonna go because they're gonna pull. Me van a dar un jalón así. Y me van a dejar una cara nueva. And I'm gonna have a new face. So I just went through this. They just took my weight and everything. Um, my blood pressure and everything we were going through what i can eat what not what is gonna happen before surgery um before during and after what i expect pre-surgery makes make a list of your current medications to bring to the hospital including their doses the number of times of needles of taking like it's all the list of all the things that i have to do for pre-surgery and let me just flip the camera Oh so, yeah, this is the pre-surgery whatnot. All the things that I have to check before the surgery. This is the day of the surgery, what I'm expecting on the check-in. It says um, the liquids, we went through all of this. Can only drink these liquids before an hour or two hours before. And all of these things, no jewelry, no makeup, no hairpin, no wigs, no nothing. And then after your surgery, like all these things that I have here, the difficulties, whatnot, if I have constipations. So I'm also getting some prescriptions from the doctor um, and whatnot. So this is me. Where did I see? I am so excited. Thursday 19, this is the day it's at 4, it's 5.45 a.m. Surgery arrived time, forget about my manicure. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, I cannot have no nail polish or nothing. It's going to be on the West Tower with Dr. Lee. And this is the checking information. I'm so excited. I am so excited, so nervous, so nervous. And then I have the week later to um, to unveil the reveal of the surgery. In this process of this surgery, I had to be prepared. I don't have no family member to, to take care of me on this process. So I am literally... Um, scared and traumatized because i didn't have no one to like take care of me however i got to hire a nurse so i got to hire a nurse to be with me a couple of days at least four or five days my first days in in after surgery after recovery because post-surgery it was gonna be a little you know difficult i had to do a liquid diet i was not allowed to bend down or move or do you know nothing strand or nothing use anything like power and nothing it was very delicate surgery so i had to rest and be on the medication i need someone to drive me it was a lot happening this person had to give me medication this person had to cook and and have everything blended i couldn't eat nothing solid for a two weeks diet so it was a lot happening this was the plastic facial feminization surgery and I am very grateful that I got the or honor to got the, get this surgery. And that was crazy. Not only that, just the preparation of the meals before the surgery. I needed to have everything liquid. I needed to have so many items that I could make things to like eat and come out with things that will sustain me. But at least I would have liked and it wouldn't hurt my throat and whatnot. But it was a hassle. I bought insurers. I bought um, cellos. I bought soups. I got like smoothies. I have a con. I had a contract also with a week of supply from Body Energy, which they provide smoothie and they gave me some um, vitamins and stuff in the smoothie to help me recover. And I did also that in the process because. First of all, I love the smoothies from Body Energy. And I was just looking for options. So I was having a smoothie every day. It was tough recovery. 
I mean, there was many times that I threw up and I couldn't handle it. But let's just back. Let's just go back. So hi. Hi. Um, introduce yourself. Repeat yourself. Oh, oh, you're. In this is for real. Hi, I'm Fong. Um, I'm the uh, physician assistant for the facial feminization surgery um, here at Kaiser. Nice to meet you. Um, all right, so. <laughs> what we're about to do. Yeah, what we're about to do today is to go over all the, um, the pre-op information for your surgery. Um, first, I just want to make sure that we have all the correct surgery that you have agreed with uh, Dr. Lee and what you want to do. Um, can you tell me what surgeries you've agreed to do? So I'm getting the facial feminization, mm -hmm. correct? Specifically. Specifically, we're getting the hairline. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to tell you by area, yeah. not like the technical term. That's fine. Um, the hairline, uh -huh. the, they're going to do this bone here. Yeah, forehead. With the bone with here. Mm -hmm. um, the nose. Uh -huh. The upper lip. Uh -huh. Um the fat graph on the um, bone cheeks inside of the temples. Okay. Uh, the chin. Okay. And the Adam's apple right. shaved. Right, trans oil. And... What else? And oh, and then there's a lipo here. Lipo, okay. And okay. then because that's not enough fat, he's going to do like a lipo here to extract the, gra the fat and just like... Okay. For the fat graph. And have you, um, and you know, and no side, no, no jaw, side, okay. no jaw, just okay. the chin. Okay. So, oh, and today, um, have you been able to pay for all that already? Yeah. Okay, let's, great. let's, let's do this. Awesome. All right. So, um, this is the pre-op, peri-op instructions. Um, I believe Jay already mentioned it to you on the phone. Did I miss something on the, the parts that I said or no? You got everything. Okay. Yeah. So um, the other thing, well, one thing is called brow lift, um, but that's kind of already included in the forehead yeah. surgery. All right. So um, do you want to pause for that for a second? <laughs> <laughs> no, we want to, we want, we want to tune wanna... everything. I'm just kidding. I'm just... Up to we'll you. be back. We'll be back. After surgery. Um, so for the first um, day, I would like you to start uh, pain medication. So there's two types, um, Norco, which is a narcotic medication, and ibuprofen, which um, as you know is an NSAID. Um, so I want you to rotate the me medication every two to three hours. So um, for example, first thing in the morning when you wake up after surgery, take your first Norco medication. And then two to three hours later, you can take ibuprofen. Two to three hours later, Norco, just kind of um it alternate back and forth got it okay and after so it'll be every three hours each yeah so every two to three hours not each but um one or the other so for example 8 a.m you wake up take narco five milligrams and then around uh, 11 a.m you can take ibuprofen and, and then that should that should be the order mm -hmm. yeah so we want to make sure that you catch up to the pain. You don't want to feel pain and then take the medication. So this way, by staggering the medication, um, the pain level will be covered. And then usually after three or five days, Norco um, doesn't really help with pain anymore. It makes patients a little bit loopy. Then you can, instead of taking Norco, you can take Tylenol. Since Norco is made out of Tylenol and Oxycodone, that's why you don't take the Tylenol in the first three or five days. You take it once you stop Norco, if that makes sense. Yeah, and all of this is already listed here, so you can reread it. Um, anesthesia and Norco or any narcotics can make you constipated. So I ordered you two um, constipation medication. The first one is called Colase, and it's a stool softener. And then the other medication is called Senna, and that's a stool stimulant. So uh, I want you to take Holace anytime you're taking Norco because um, so that you can have a better bowel movement. If you can't take, um, if you still can't have a bowel movement after three or five days, you can take Senna. 
but it can be a little bit aggravated to your um, you know, gut. So take only as needed. So every time that I take the Norco, the Narco, I take what? Colase. The yeah. colase, but the colase is it's a stool softener. So if every every six hours that um, I would take, well, right? Good Basically. question. Yeah, thank you for asking because that's a Do good I take question. that too or no? I just mean the day that day you can take it. Just, just one sleep. time. Yeah. Yeah. You can take it, for example, before you sleep. Yeah. You don't have to take it like, um, what I meant is any day that you take the Norco, you can take the Colace. Okay? All right. Like at the end of the day. Yeah, end of the day. Or that is, you know. Or throughout the day. Yeah, through any time that. Um, Should it be in the morning? It can be in the morning or at night time. It's just, you know, it's usually about once or twice a day. Got it. Right. So it's, you can take it in the morning or at night or once in the morning, once at night. Just depending on how you feel, how complicated you feel, okay? Um, along with that, um, anesthesia or Norco can also make you nauseous and want to vomit. So I also ordered Zofran. Um, you may actually bring that Zofran with you the day of surgery in case on your way home you're feeling nauseous, you can take it. Also can I take Zantac? Uh, Zantac? Yeah. Uh, this is before. Oh, before surgery, not no, no because okay. we want you to be, um, no. yeah, not. Okay. So we don't want any alter mental status when you sign the consent form. So okay. try not to take any medicine. I'm just asking. Okay. okay, good question though. Um, so the next third medication is called Duracept. It's an antibiotic, and I want you to take it the day after surgery. Is to prevent um, infection. Infection, exactly. And since you're getting a nose surgery, do I take that every eight hours? So uh, it's on your. It's going to be every twice a day, so every twelve hours, um, and that will be listed on your bottle. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, so the antibiotics. Oh, uh, actually, the but because of your rhinoplasty, um, you're you're going to have some stuffy nose. Yes. And that's going to be like a hardened, mucusy, bloody, like boogers. Um, so it's going to be uncomfortable. I order you some nose spray to soften up that mucus so that it's more easy to take out. And you can gently take it out with a uh, Q-tip if you like. Um, but as you remember from Jay, um, you can't blow your nose, right? Because we don't want to put pressure in your, in your frontal sinus. And we don't want you to uh, sneeze unless you can sneeze with your mouth open, okay? Um, since you're also getting your chin surgery, I ordered some antibiotic mouthwash so you can gargle and keep your mouth clean. You can also brush your teeth, but just really gently with like a soft toothbrush, all right? And lastly, you have that COVID test on Monday. Yeah. Monday. Yeah, all right. So um, you can just paste this on your wall or put it on your fridge. As reference. Um, I also wrote down some frequently asked questions after surgery. Some of the things that you might not expect um, is that I have a question. Oh, I'm not sure. Too. Yeah. Um, do you guys? I leave bandage. I have to get my own bandage for after, right? Or no? No, you're gonna go home with the man bandage, okay. and um, I'll show you a couple pictures in a bit. Okay. What that looks like. Okay. Um, but a couple of things um, I just wanted to tell you that is very commonly asked and people don't think about when they go to surgery is um, you might have some sore throat after surgery because you're intubated, right? Um, for a long time, for quite a couple hours at least. And so that's gonna be irritating. Um, it will get better in a couple of days or weeks. You're also going, might throw some up some blood because of the, um, surgery off your nose and mouth, you can swallow some blood. And so that looks scary, but it's actually co common and normal. Um, you may also have some sore arms because you're kind of strapped in during surgery. Okay, so that will get better um, in a couple of weeks. You can massage your arms when it's sore. And then you might also have- um, Why they strap you? Sorry? Why they hold you? Um, the, the reason why they strap you down. <laughs> it's not because you're really, first of all, um, 
we don't want we want you to be contained so that we're when we're working you're not moving around got it um and also we we have a tight space but yeah it's not because you're moving around a lot i, I thought i thought i was like wait my god is itching <laughs> no you're gonna be completely asleep so yeah. that won't happen yeah and then the other thing that patients don't realize is that you're going to have a foley catheter so that you can urinate uh, or empty your bladder during surgery so because you're getting that fully catheter, um, you might have some irritation when you urinate after surgery. So I'm gonna have a fully catheter, yeah. In there. In there, yeah. Okay, so I have something to share now. Okay. I am having a follow up with a doctor, uh -huh. and I have a scar. Okay. I have a scar. I could show you a picture. I have a picture of okay. the graft. Okay. Um. They wanted to like she's on the follow. They did that part, but the follow. I don't know what is gonna be the follow up. Mm -hmm. The doctor said that, that that is something that um they could do surgery on. Okay. And fix. Okay. Um, but it has to be on the anesthesia. Mm hmm. So I don't know. I mean, the thing will go through. Okay. But it has to be because it hurts. Well, well you'll, you'll definitely be asleep when we have yeah, yeah. you. Um, and My question is, would that will be something that will complicate that? Or that is something that is doable? I think as long as... On time and go back before the day before because for some reason, I wanted to change my hair color. I thought I was going to be someone different. I wanted to change my hood color. So I was in the process of changing my color. But I wanted to show you this video, which I didn't want to show you. But I really want to show you this video so you can see what I looked before. Oh, what a disaster. So let's go there. Bueno, aquí tengo la cosa que estoy usando, perdonen el reguero, pero mira, ¿qué estoy usando? Primeramente estoy usando los productos Oloplex. I'm using the Oloplex, the one and two, because I'm doing the bleach. The bleach that I'm using is the Matrix Light Master, and it's blue pigment, which I love. I'm using a Provana brush from the collection of, um, this was the collection of um, Guy Tang with Provana, the balayage um, brush. And uh, we have 40 volume. We're going in. And then to do this part, the bottom part, I bought this surround wrap, which is a multi purpose sealing wrap. And I wanted to do the regular plastic, but it's like the plastic is more complicated. I already, this is like a different material. But like a cape, I already did like a cape on me with it. And we're gonna be using this to be incubating the hair color. And yeah, I'm changing the color and this brown. The so guys, I am here trying to fix this color on my Lord. And I have, I wanna show you what it's, what I'm working with right now. I tried to dip color yesterday, look at the ends. We never it's still dark, but the root has really got light quickly, and I'm just going to pre-lighten the bottom, incubate it, and then tone it, which I love. So that was me doing my hair color, trying to change my hair color. I wanted to be blonde. I wanted to be like, I was doing the most is I had blue black hair. I was just trying to bleach that hair and stripping that hair, which I should have not done and just kept it dark because then later on I just colored it dark, which doesn't make no sense. But at that moment, I wanted it blonde and I it was just like the moment I wanted to change. And then after surgery, I knew I couldn't color my hair and I needed some month um, ahead to be able to color my hair because they were gonna open my head from from ear to ear, which they did to really pull my hairline. And yes, I got that done. So that was the process that I couldn't get my hair color. So I wanted to change my hair color. 
And that was the mess. A total mess. But without that, um, I got to prepare myself that night. I remember crying before leaving to the surgery in the morning and just crying and praying and, you know, putting myself on God's hand and just crying, you know, because they tell you in the surgery paper, like, anything could happen and you could die in this surgery as well. So I was a little afraid of that. However, I was just going to surgery and yeah, this is me just really going to surgery and just ready for that. Let's do that. It was so frightening. It was so frightening that you have to check it out. So the surgery is already done. I have the surgery done. I remember just opening my eyes and they were trying to wake me up. I had a tube in my mouth. I had my stomach was hurting. I was all wrapped up already. They were just trying to suck the blood out of my throat. And I, I remember grabbing the lady's hand and just pushing that thing in because I was choking with the blood. And I was sucking the blood and I was just like, oh, this hurts because I couldn't even talk. I couldn't like even barely talk. And then I was like, oh, this hurts. And they were like, well, the doctor put it like that. I was like, I don't care, put it out now. And then they loosened up a little bit. So I was there trying to recover whatnot those couple of minutes after surgery. I remember that for me, I when I went to the room to get surgery, I remember they putting a mask on me and then I was up. But in reality, it was not five minutes. It was a surgery of the entire freaking day i got in at early in the morning it was like five o'clock in the morning and they picked me up at 9 p.m so there was an entire hour there was a lot of doctors on it it was a mission a shout out for the people that picked me up veronica thank you for all the support and for the people that can't take care of me and the nurse and the people that support me in this process it was amazing but then this, after two, I couldn't move. I couldn't do nothing. It was so heavy. I was just crying. It was just crazy. And I couldn't know myself. And then I got home. And this is what I looked like. Check it out. <sighs> Surgery. Oh.
that was a lot. Like my eyes were swollen. I couldn't see. I couldn't talk. I couldn't like, it had to drink everything through a straw. I couldn't cough. I couldn't sneeze. I couldn't breathe through my nose, barely breathe through my mouth. Like it was insane. Luckily they gave me painkillers. They gave me some great drugs that I was just like knocked out, just waking up, just eating pills, sleeping. That was like for five days. I couldn't take a shower. I could it was a lot. Like I did the most this. I remember one one day the next morning. I wanted to take a shower so bad. And then the nurse was like, remember you don't take a shower and I'm in the bathroom, water on, and I'm just throwing myself water from the toilet, trying to wash up myself. And I did this entire mess with water all over the place. Like I didn't care. I just wanted to freshen up. And then very grateful that the nurse got to like clean my mess and deal with my bull crap because I was being drama, drama diva queen, darling. And I was just doing the most sense, but it was very painful. It was very, you know, very hard to process. And until the day came that after three days, I was allowed to take off the mask. And one night, one night, one of the nights that I was sweating and I couldn't take it no more. And all these rap that I had, I was very, I was getting that anxiety attack. And I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. And this is what happened. And have in mind that what you're about to see, you're going to be good. Check this out.
that you got to see that? Like at that moment, my God, I couldn't. That was traumatizing. At that moment, I wish you could read and hear what I was saying in my head over and over. I was so traumatized. I was telling to myself why I got myself into this surgery. Look like what like I look. I was looking like an elephant. My, I couldn't recognize my face. I was so in shock. I was so afraid. You know, there was a lot of things happening. I was regretting it because I was like, oh my God, what I just done, look at me. And I remember that night just walking away out of the mirror and just like going to bed. And I remember started started crying and just like trying to drink a pill to calm down and relax. And I was like, let me just trust the process because I know the doctor that did my surgery, um, he's amazing and I seen his amazing work. I knew that I was gonna be so swollen and it was a process of healing. However, my mind couldn't adjust or, you know, digest the fact that I was just looking like that. You know, all these lines, my head, the scars, the blood, like it was a lot, a lot. But then a couple of days passed and I started to feel much better. And then I had to go back to meetings with the doctor, the checkup, and they started to doing some process to take out the cast from my nose and then I had stitches on my head. And this is what happened. Check it out. Honey, I'm coming through. Hello, my peoples. This is the, it is May 27 and I am ready. My voice sounds different too. Um, today I have an appointment with um, the surgeon and I am on my way to um, a phase reveal basically. They're going to remove apparently the cast on the nose and the doctor is going to see how the work has been done and everything. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry for that. But I'm so excited. I'm about to drive um, after surgery, which I'm so excited. And right now, it's a lot of happening. I don't know if you can really appreciate it. I tried to do a little bit of something on my face. I did a little bit of my eyebrows, a little mascara. I can't wear, not wear makeup. I wear some gloss. And I am just excited to see what is the reaction of the doctor and what is their recommendations and what is the, you know, everything. It's been a process to adopt to my new phase because I couldn't like the second day, the third or the the third between the third and the fourth day, I took off the band, and I had permission to take out the band two days after surgery, but I feel I was so so sore that I had to like take all this band off, and when I took off the band, it was a moment. I have to tell you. But now I'm on my way to um, Kaiser Permanente, which I got my surgery done at. And yeah, here we go. So come with me. Say hi to Coco. Coco is my new puppy, which I'm going to do a new video about my Coco. And what is the process? Coco, say hi. Say hi to my people. <laughs> yes, he's so adorable. We are ready. We are here getting ready. I'm already in my car and just getting my seatbelt put together. Let me take off a little of this mask because I was just trying, just in case I was going through people, um, you know, because of the COVID in California, we still, um, the masks are, you know, optional, but since I am through the surgery and everything, I want to really take care of myself and avoid any cold, any, um, anything, anything that could really, um, affect my process. And now we're heading to the hospital. I think the drive is like 20 minutes. 
or so. But um, I wanted to share this journey, not because I'm getting scared or nothing, but because maybe this could motivate someone else to get something done. Oh, look at my manicure. By the way, I did this morning, this manicure. This is gel, so pretty. I thought it was gonna be more pink vibe, but it's giving me nude cheek, I love. So no, nothing, I'm just gonna go now to drive there. Uh, I'm going like one hour and a half before I think the commute is like 20 minutes. I want to get there as soon as is possible, but drive carefully and be very precautious. I want to take my time, not rush, and be there before time. Because um, here in California, it's a thing to be late all the time and it's a bull crap. But yeah, we're going to head there now. I'm going to pump a little bit of music and just, you know, drive there once i'm there i'm going to be able to record the around where i got surgery and then hopefully i could go to the girls that wanted me like the nurses that were working on the surgeon like in the process they were like well, you know you need to come back to me you need to come back to me to see your face to see anything so i'm pretty sure they were very impacted because i got 10 procedures that i'm going to be explaining to you shortly and yeah let me just go i don't know if you can really hear me clearly with all this noise of this car the ac and everything but just keep on watching my peoples again we just arrived to um, the facilities and I am so excited and I had a conversation with my mom and this was like a surprise for my mom because if I would have told her she wouldn't say she would have said from the beginning no you're not getting no surgery no plastic surgery but I got to see my father he is doing very well thanks God because in the process of recovery um, two days ago which is today is Friday wait let me, let me recap that yeah, today is Friday, Wednesday the 25th made. I received a phone call um, from my niece and my dad passed out, the ambulance came and everything. So I was crying that day and I don't know if the tears went through there or not, but I know for some reason there's a stitch here that is not like setting right. So i'm so excited hopefully the doctor lets me record him because the policy of kaiser they don't let you record the doctors and all like that but at least a selfie you know what i mean a selfie they're gonna show you my doctor is so gorgeous by the way thank you jane lee you're so amazing um yeah let's go there i had to go to starbucks on my way here this is my new favorite drink is the pink frappuccino i think it's strawberry frappuccino with coconut milk no whip trying to keep the shape and i got a venti which is so delish and i'm trying to shove it but not I, at least half of it because i'm starving i'm hungry so hopefully the doctor said that i could finally eat something solid since i've been having a liquid diet all this time and yeah Let's see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Waiting area. I already checked in. Take this beautiful picture frame of the observatory in LA, which I love. And here we are, a little bruised still, but it's a process. And I am so excited. I can't wait to see the reveal. I already came out of the um, appointment and I could not record in there, which is understandable and respectable. They only removed the stitches, but they left the cast. Then they took out all the stitches from the head. Now I want to go to the. Ooh, I can't take no sun. Now I want to go to the area where I took the surgery, which is back here. And. I am going to visit because the girl they were like, oh, come, you got an appointment on Friday, come, we want to see you. And the, the surgeon assistant was telling me that I did amazing, which is a huge surgery, and I did really, really well. I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> um, so let's see, let's see what are their reactions. And yeah, we're on the th third floor of recovery area where i got the surgery and the girls wanted to see my face and stuff but i am just stopping by to see if like i see the girl that i really really remember her face since i was under anesthesia i couldn't like really remember names and stuff after and she mentioned like three times she showed me her badge she showed me her name she was like i want to see your face for real for real come 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 on friday so i'm here to try to you know integrate the content you know to create the content let's see what they say came out of the thing they cleaned my nose and took out all the stitches and the stitcher from my forehead which i'm not going to show you now because it's like a lot going on but they put like a uh, nail spring after it and i'm so excited because my diet it's over i don't have to do a liquid diet no more i could go in and eat something solid as long as not pointy or steaky that i don't have to chew too much i could go and get myself a great meal so i think i'm gonna call one of my friends that she got a nose job and i'm going to invite her to go to eat because i'm starving i have been five days starving no um, I was excited with the lips and everything. Thanks God they took all of that. And she said, you can read and stuff, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, let's go to eat. And you know how it is. I was expecting to get everything out, but the doctor decided to not. Um, I am so grateful. I was just a little crying because my hairline before surgery, I had a widow's pick. And I actually came and I had like the scar as a V. And I was like, I want that removed and whatnot. So the doctor said once it was healed, he could have like, that wasn't like a problem or nothing. It was easy to fix. I was a little, you know, triggered by that. Um, but everything was coming out better. I was still swollen. I couldn't like really um, talk barely. Um, I noticed that after surgery, I don't sing like the same before, which I am upset because they did my nose and my, and my Adam's apple and they did it with a new system that it was a laser and it was crazy. So I had so much surgery on one shot. So it was 10 procedures, 
to tell you quick because you just saw this entire face and you're like what in the world so first step i got a um they did my hairline so they removed my hairline and they put it shorter they cut a piece from my hairline once they do that they pull that skin and they took this bone from here and shaved it and put it back they also cut this bone here to make the eyes cliff when they lifted and my side my sideburns they lifted my eyebrows to connect my um my hairline of course they did my beautiful nose darling they did a fat graft so they shaved all my head over here and they removed the graft from my the 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 fat graft the fat they removed the fat from my upper top of my belly type of thing they also put that fat graft to um shave my face they also did my nose and then they cut my upper lip and put my lip higher they lifted my lips they also um pulled this um they did a uh a opening through there and they pull all this skin and they shave all my chin literally my chin was down here they literally changed this shaved this and then through there they did the laser treatment which was the laser to remove the add apples also i got a liposuction to have like more frame and that so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine nine and ten with the chin yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten with the little grasita que me sacaron from up there which was not a light bulb like huge but it took a little fat from there to put the fat on the bone cheeks and give me bone cheeks so the nose they cut it they lift it he told me that i broke your entire nose and you know take care of your nose but i got all of that the price for that i'll tell you after my next appointment at the doctor check it out so you're gonna come for me now and this is something that i don't know it's crazy but Thankfully, I work for a company that have um, gave me a platinum search, um, insurance, so that was a mayor. The all the rest was out of my pocket because some of the, the surgery was qualified by the facial feminization surgery. However, there was other procedures that was not part of the insurance coverage, and it had it came from ching ching from my bank account. And this surgery just gave me the you know the strength to come and put my face on cameras and do videos and do other things and feel more confident and feel prettier and all that stuff so i am so happy so happy of this surgery i really encourage you to put yourself if you want to do a surgery like that if you would on a, another surgery just go for it and don't miss it just just do it Hey, what's up my people? Again, it's me, your girl Rita Garcia, and we're on the second appointment post-surgery. And we're here at Kaiser again. Um, this is the outfit. I'm rocking full Adidas, and I am giving you Middle Eastern, which I cannot take no sun. It is so sunny, but I'm always in the shadow. I also carry an umbrella all the time. And here, here we are. So in this section, we're literally removing the cast from the nose and this the clips, the stitches that I have. Um, not the stitches, but they did like a metal clip type of thing. Staples, I guess. And they're gonna remove them today. So I am so excited to see the nose reveal. Right now, I am 
just giving you like the lip moment I which I love and I am so excited so let me see if I can record a little bit today which is impossible because they have a policy here at Kaiser that you cannot record but here I am sharing my transformation and my transformation and yeah let me just switch the camera but you can take a quick view of what's popping here at Kaiser a lot of people is very chill there's a lot of patients around so we're keeping myself protected always with the mask um, washing my hands constantly here in California we still have the the max on certain places mandatory and the hospital of course is one of them so let me just switch the camera and so you can enjoy a little bit of what's happening at kaiser so this is the main entrance of the um the facilities and they have like their own pharmacy also they have this is like the check-in surgery this is where i'm going right now this way but around they have the urgent care they have this pretty um, playground around here and that's where i got my surgery done on the third floor and yeah it's so super cute super fancy um yeah and the service is unbelievable here at kaiser permanent this so we're just gonna walk in and check what's up waiting for the surgeon assistant to like really remove this cast right here i had this red because i guess the glue was giving me allergies i have very sensitive skin so i can't wait to remove this and just like work that skin and get it back to normal and yeah this is my my healing is going very well um my hairline it's healing very well i'm so surprised because my forehead was back here and just like pulling all of this this is like you know i look like i have big cheeks but it's not it's just like this giving the pressure and i'm just keeping the fat graph like not you know but i don't have no makeup or nothing so and nothing i'm so excited to see the results my profile changed so much like it's unbelievable and yeah this is what we're doing today and the lighting it's not even helping it's the worst light in here but i am so excited uh i can't wait to see my nose what it looks like i'm really nervous right now because i don't know how i'm going to be reacting and how my nose is gonna look because this is like permanent but i trust the surgeon and i'm pretty sure he did an amazing job um it looks like i'm going through pain but i'm not I don't have no pain or nothing right now. I just have this allergy right here, which is annoying, but that's gonna like clear out. And nothing, trying to avoid the sun and trying to continue, you know, recuperating, resting, you know, not breaking the rules. I have to keep this for at least four weeks for the healing here, including the chin. And the only part that I think that it will hurt if I touch it severely, it's my like where I used to have the Adam apple. Bye, Adam. <sighs> Bitch, I was dying to get rid of this in a sample. But yeah, and another thing is that I don't feel, I feel like I have a feeling, but I don't have no complete sensation yet here on the top of my head which is okay, it's normal, and yeah, let's see what's going on, and I'll show you after to show you a little bit of my nose. So this is the eclipse. Oh, let me put nose cast, which is all yellow inside, which is a head of glue. And this was the nose cast. Hey, what's up, my peoples? How you doing? 
It's your girl Rita Garcia and we're still in the process. This is the second week of post-surgery and this is part of the process. Forgive my appearance. I'm trying to like adjust not only to my face, but there's a lot happening. Today I was my first shower that I could literally just throw all the water in hot because I didn't have no cast or nothing because yesterday I removed the cast and they removed the stitches from my head and I'm still in recovery and I still have like scar notice this, everything is healing I'm still bruising it's only two weeks and I am swollen so um this is the basically the after with the nose which I like so much. I have a rash here because I get psoriasis. So they had this cast for so long. So I couldn't like really have my skin like clean and everything like that, you know, to keep my um, skin clean and moisturized and everything. And, and I just, you know, I still have this huge scar on my forehead, which is, it's going to heal and it's, you know, it's going to remove. Um, I'm still in the process of healing. I still have stitches inside my mouth. So I already took a shower and I wanted to record this part because yesterday I basically went to Kaiser Permanente and got the, um, the stitches removed and the cast removed and I saw um, the doctor's assistance and which was amazing and it was a little painful to take the clips out but they were uncomfortable already especially the bottom part like I wanted to do this and I couldn't because the clip was just like hurting and now I feel much better it was you know a little painful it felt like they were pulling your hair somehow but yes this is the process I was you know, it looks like I, a bus ran over me. Let me just remove this so you can like see the overall. I'm still um, sore. But this is basically, oh my God, I can't look better. So this is basically the, the jaw, how it's going on and everything. And why I'm doing my, um, I want to just like go and clean my face and like I already did like a cleanser but while I'm talking I want to do like um a clean up and whatnot uh yeah my hair it's like blonde I have a mess on my hair which I'm trying to figure out what color I really want I have like so many tones on my hair but I wanted to change the hair color and um I just bleached it before surgery so I don't have to like have dark hair and like this I'm thinking about throwing a, a shampoo or gloss for the moment but I am vibing with the blonde which I have like um I have like a lot of gray hereditary and yeah so I could barely feel my forehead, like my head, like my forehead, I could feel slightly. But here it's all numb, like all the, um, all the, uh, all the pulling and whatnot. This part here, I cannot feel nothing basically. It's, it's like, I, I feel like something there, but it's not like I don't feel it. Um, the tender sensation, I don't have like real sensation. So I know I'm touching my head and, and I feel like something is there, but it's not like completely the sensation of something touching you. It's like if I would have like some towels or something that I can't like touch it, that's like the feeling basically. But it doesn't hurt. I don't have no pain and um yeah this is what I'm gonna be doing right now. I wanna clean my face and talk about the surgery. So um one of the things that I want to um 
really mention is that this takes a while to heal and it was a lot of process in one shot so um i am not even supposed to have not the jaw bra on but because i'm gonna clean my face i wanted to take this moment and just record this quick video so let me just move on into skincare real quick while i'm talking about the surgery so this is the freak beauty on repeat it's a ph balance it's a cat cactus cleanser gel and before this i did like a clean up when i was in the shower and i was using the be gentle by monade um which is really good for um dry skin i love and now i want to do this gel it's a cactus it's very hydrating so i want like ph balance to like you know mix they say not mixing your skincare products and whatnot but i i am this girl <laughs> um so this feels good it's very jelly and let's go back to the studio i just wanted to like touch my face and just like massage my face So making my mind to do this surgery was not easy. I took over 11 months to like really plan and discover um, and you know, um, really make this big decision because I was getting so many procedures on once and I am in California, Hollywood, California and my family is in puerto rico some is in jersey and florida but oh. <laughs> um i need to remove this so this is a cleanser it feels so good so it wasn't like nothing that i was like oh i'm getting this surgery let me get it done and that's it let me sit on it you know what i mean i was no like I didn't go and quit to the surgery. So it wasn't like, let me sit on it. Let me think about it. Let me do a research. Let me see the doctor. Let me see this. Let me see that. So um, me doing that, it was a, oh, look at my profile on the glass, which is so different. <laughs> I'm trying to get adjust. I am still swollen and I had so many procedures. Let me tell you how many procedures I got. I got 10 procedures. Let me explain you. Let me remove this. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So I did 10 procedures and Coco, get out of here. I had to go introduce you, Coco, um, my new puppy and <laughs> stay tuned because I'm going to record that too. Ugh. So I am just having this I have to be very careful because some areas I don't feel my face yet. And yeah, it's a process. I'm looking busted. But it's a process. Um, so, I did 10 procedures. And actually, the name of the surgery is called the facial feminization surgery is a surgery that um reconstructs or reshape the hard shapes to a softer shapes and i mean if you was thinking about this i was gonna look like me you got it twisted it was just like a soft and I'm still healing it like ugh, in Conada. And recovery was a bitch. Like it was a mission to like really recover and to like get, you know? And I've been drinking so many other things and I had a nutritionist and it was a long process, but I'll tell you details later. So how to prepare just in case you get into surgery to how to prepare for this surgery after post-surgery because before it's just like getting money and just you know getting mental and you know you know ready for the surgery 
On another note, I just want to be specifically and share that I had a, self, a low self-esteem and, you know, I'm very confident myself. I don't compete with other people. I compete with myself. So improving myself is just like a challenge for myself. But I wasn't uncomfortable. I just wanted to, I was uncomfortable with certain things and I didn't want to retweet those. But it was something that I wanted to get done. And I don't think it's something bad about it. Um, like I had someone tell me, oh, you need self-love. And this is nothing about self-love. I love myself. You know, I love my persona. I love the heart that I have and everything. Let me take a shot of this. This is so disgusting, by the way. And it's so healthy for you. It's the Press Wells. I got this from Bar ba from Body Energy at the in Hollywood. And this is ginger, lemon, and canyon. 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 Never mind. That. Let me put it in the door. I hope you guys like really see what's in here. Come on. Okay, no, never mind. Well, I hope you can learn it. They're really strong. I was supposed to drink the entire. Let me try to drink the half of it. Surgery. Um, so the facial feminization surgery, it's called. Um, it was really tough. And <coughs> and la bandera boricua. <laughs> So I had 10 procedures, let this like sink. This is the, the True Pure Rose and Retinol. It's a facial mist, allow the luxury face mist to smooth and hydrate. And I love the smell. And I like to spray stuff on my face, which is really like the sensation, I like that. Um, especially if they, when they're cold, it feels so good. So, procedures. Let's talk about that. First procedure. So, I got done. Oh my god, this, this is weird to share this. But I know people's gonna be asking and like, Oh, what you get done? What you get done? And just watching the befores and now that I'm not even healed, you know? But just watching the befores, it's like... What a change, you know? Especially my nose and my lips and my eyebrows lift. Okay, let's talk about it, okay? So first procedure. The first procedure that I got done was a hairline, of course. You see the scar? This hairline pull was like two centimeters from the forehead. So my forehead was like back here. They pushed it. They created a hairline, so they literally had a scar from here going there, around, and oh and down. And that's the way they pull. Also, they pull the... I had this sideburn, like, not the sideburn, sideburn is this. But the... Is, I had an opening. I don't know what you call that. Not like a bald spot, but it's just like two openings. They pull that, and they made the hairline more soft let's put it like that that was one procedure in this same procedure they did a eyebrow lift which is the second procedure because they have to like you know rearrange and it was just like full second procedure so that eyebrows lift girl and the hairline 
Then they went in because they cut that. But the reason they cut that is to pull down and work with the forehead. So they removed this bone here. Here, this bone from here. They cut it, remove it, shave it, like sand it and shave it. And then they put it back with a metal. That is to soften the forehead. I was three. Um, let me put a little more of this. I love this. Um, so that was number three. They also cut the bone on top of my eyes on both sides to make the eye bigger and like more feminine or more soft. And when, when, like after three, I feel my eyes are bigger and they're very, and I don't have no makeup. I can't, I can't wait to get healed and do my makeup. So anyway, that is four. They did that. They also did my nose, which was um, curved, broken down, lifted and minimized. All of that was done in there. That was five. They also did a lip lift they actually cut the lip from the like the upper lip and they cut this here and they pushed it up and that's why my lip is like mm, like up let me get close so the light's much better now so that was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Seven was my chin. So they cut my chin, two fingers from my chin. And this is so crazy because now I see the pictures and like the angles. And I couldn't believe that my chin was two fingers longer. So imagine two and two, like I had the biggest head ever. Mommy, it was like the scary movie, like that Joker type of vibe. Matter of fact, I have a picture that I had to put around here of me and my, nie my nephew and my sister. We went to we was in Puerto Rico and I invited them to the, it was a concert of Enrique Iglesias. And we took like a photo or whatnot. Girl, my face was like the scary movie. Hell no. Anyways, <sighs> look at that. So I did the chin, it was two inches. They didn't shave or cut the back, which it was very soft already. But the chin right here, they just like cut it and sanded it and whatnot. That was seven. Eight. Eight, they did a lipo, which I'm very, very sored. I am very sored. Okay. And they did a lipo all the way here. All the way there. They did a lipo, so this is supposed to like get flatter. That's why I had to wear a jaw bra because of the chin and the lipo. They also shaved my Adam's apple. So I used to have an Adam's apple in the past. Bye, Adam. And finally, I got rid of that motherfucker because that shit got me like clogged. And I remember one time I had this argument in a bank because this em employee, not from the bank, but it was like a second employee of a security. And he was just like, oh, you, 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 you have an Adam's apple. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I'll give you Adam's apple. <laughs> you know what I mean? But finally I got rid of him. He, I don't know how he's doing. I don't care. Bye, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> So that was eight or nine. Let's continue because I got more processed. I also got a, because they did a lipo. 
I got a fat graft. So they put fat graft. They put fat all over my bone cheeks in the higher level, like right here, which I love. Also, I used to have like a like a empty like a dentation in my head going in and then i had like cheeks and it was nothing but it was just like in and then nothing so they did this and he filled all of this to shape a little more of the face to like a oval face which is the perfect face by the looks and i also got um because the fat that they removed on the bottom was not enough. They did a mini lipo from my belly button up, like the abs or the torso type of vibe, which I really like because I am flatter from that area and I wasn't expecting that he was gonna go, mm, go in and just like, mm, that's like I don't put that. Mm, 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 mm. And you know, but it was very painful. What really was very, very, very painful was like the lipo part. And there you go. There's my 10 procedures. The only procedure, because if there were 11, but the only procedure I didn't got done was the fat removed from here. You know, so I was afraid that is, you know, what not, but that is a simple surgery that they literally do a scar on your cheek and they remove the fat from there and they close that. But I still have stitches in my mouth. Um, I didn't get it done. I didn't got it done because I was just not like, you know, mm, sure or not, but most likely I'll get it done. Usually when I lose weight, this sucks in. mommy and i'm giving you gotta so um wait i forgot all about my skincare i need to like hurry up um let me just put some this that i've been using and it's really um going fast it's a vitamin c it's from absolute the packaging is so cute it's it applied to clean and dry in in the morning and evening is a uh, is apply water based serum. It's like a moisturizer. It's an oil. I guess you go. Yeah, let's play with this a little bit. So I got those procedures done. Let me tell you guys, it was not easy to like for the surgery, you know, it was a lot of preparing and stuff, but also it was a lot of, the recovery was like, oh my God, you have to be prepared mentally, financially, and physically. I went to surgery literally at 5.45 a.m. May 19, I was there and and surgery started at seven. I left the hospital at 9 p.m. from the morning. So I was there for hours. I got to know what time surgery finished, but the minute I closed my eyes and opened my eyes, for me, it was like five minutes, like not even. It was like I went to sleep and it was like bling, bling, and I was up. But when you get up, you have to prepare you mentally that you're going to be some type of bandage and you have to be mentally prepared. Also, you need to have someone to really take care of you because you not you can't be able to do basically nothing. Um, when I got it there and they took me home, I was just like in anesthesia. I had like good painkillers and whatnot, but it was tough. It was tough. I couldn't breathe through my nose. 
for like two weeks. You know, I started reading the other days. Um, my throat, because they intubate you. My throat, I cannot sing. I had to wait till my throat to like heal to be able to like hit notes because the other day I was trying to sing and I was like, oh my God, my voice. But that's like a process, you know? I cannot force the voice to like do that. And, you know, they recommend me to do massages and stuff to like set the skin. Because remember, it's two, eight, two fingers. I mean, this skin was stretched. <laughs> like, so now it's just trying to get, you know, back. This here is like so, like sore. Like, it's sore. You can, I, I mean, look at my neck. It's so big. But it's going to get there. It's going to get there. It's a process. Um, I was going to get get my voice changed, which is a different surgery. But I am not sure about that because that's, you have to be like a few months without talking. And you have to like, you don't know what voice you're going to have. Like it. You know what I mean? So I am so afraid of that. I am just taking voice therapy to see if I could soften my voice a little more. And yeah, that's what I'm doing with my life. And this is part of the procedures. I'm still like bruised, you know? The second day I remember I was so bruised and I couldn't see through this eye, you know? It was like a lot. It was a lot, it was a lot. It was, it was a moment, you know, I did a lot of meditation and a lot of prayers. Like the minute I walked out of the house, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. But that morning that I woke up in the morning and I was just getting ready, I started crying. I had a breakdown and I was like, God, this is the moment that I'm going to walk out of this door but I do not know if I'm going to come back. So, you know, I know everything is going to be, you know, great. And you have, you know, it's all your will. And I was like, God, forgive my sins and all of that. I was repenting and everything because you never know. And the paper says that this surgery, because people could die in a surgery, you know. And I am very grateful that, you know, God and my guiding angels and like, you know, to control of everything and everything has been successfully. Um, I am very happy with the results. You know, it's like me, but in a better way. And um, it's like an upgrade. It's like when you change from your iPhone 7 to the 13. Something like that. But <laughs> I am just um, continuing to like healing and stuff. And... Um, ready for some of this moisturizer. It's all about moisture. This is a moisturizer repair from Proactive. It's really good, really soft. I like to like roll and stuff like that, but not this moment because I don't want to have pain later. I just want to be gentle and not just do all of the full skincare and whatnot. So, good. so, yeah, this is the two weeks post surgery, and um, I want to share a little bit more about like the cost and what is the cost of the surgery, and you know, to prepare yourself, what is the cost to like actually prepare yourself you have to do groceries i mean i mean i had a i had a someone here taking care of me i had a nutritionist that gave me training and medication like not medication but like vitamins and stuff to like re regenerate the the vessels and everything to come back you know so i have like movement and like because i know people they after surgery they stay still stiff I still have movement. I can move every part of like the face and that helps a lot. Plus you have to be on a liquid diet 
for at least a week one week straight liquid diet so you need to have a lot of insures a lot of like jello a lot of like gatorades and like things that will keep you you know um hydrated and you know fed and protein and all of these stuff because they're very necessary to like the healing and all the medication you drink it's like you need to have food in your stomach on another note the process of the anesthesia and the constipations it was the worst i was like for two days the first two days that i couldn't go to the bathroom and they gave me medications and everything which i drank and everything but um i remember the day that i was like literally i was like i need to go to the bathroom that it was just like i was going every day to the bathroom not as like before because it was a liquid diet and stuff like that but I was still going to the bathroom, which is very important. You know, you need to continue with that. Your throat, you need a lot of like sore pills. And I bought some act and some other things that I'm going to show you on the, on the other section, which is, you know, the medication and stuff. And yeah, it was just like a process. I didn't share this with my mom. You know, my mom figured out the last couple of days that I was going to get surgery. And, you know, I didn't want to share it with no one because I didn't want no one to, like, be like, are you sure you want to get this done? This you look like, like, who's going to take care of you? What you going to do? Da, da, da. So once they knew that everybody wanted to fly here to Hollywood and I was like, no, I got everything covered. I'm good. What not? And, you know, I'm very grateful because you need to be prepared. So I took vacation and sick days from work, which I love so much. The support and the love and conditioning from work and um, from my two jobs. So that was amazing. Um, I also was saving for this and, you know, preparing myself financially because it was a huge surgery and it was going to require, you know, money geekies, you know. And I also very grateful with... Um, with my medical insurance which it cover you know some of the part of the surgery and the service was amazing like my doctor it is i mean i'm so happy my doctor and the service the customer service of this um medical insurance um was amazing so i have kaiser permanente hi kaiser um and they didn't let me record throughout the you know eh, you can't record because of the policies and whatnot but um i am so grateful with these people the service was oh my god the recovery the after they called me the next day the following day that they made sure that i was perfect they had the instructions the medications like they sent me videos and videos and tutorial like things to like see and prepare the person that was gonna take care of me about scarf about food if i feel like this if i feel like that they broke it down to the detail that i felt so secure you know when i spoke with the anesthesiologist and i mean i felt so secure i had two anesthesiologists i had three surgeons and I had their assistance plus like whoever was around. And I felt so, so secure to do this surgery. Like this is something that, you know, I respect people that travel to other countries and they get the surgeries done. And I, and I love, and I love the aesthetics. I like surgeries. I like people when they feel much better and they look amazing and they want to look into, you know, I root for that. You know, but this surgery in particular, it wouldn't be something that I would have go and travel. You know, it wasn't like secure. Like I wanted to be in the U.S. just in case there's anything. I go just go there. There's no issues. There's no drama because I had a friend. She had some implants in Tijuana, Mexico. Then she had to go back and remove them. Like I didn't want to go through none of that stuff. I wanted to feel safe and secure. So I really invested. This beauty, I feel much younger and just stay tuned for when this is gone, this is gone and I can like really literally, you know, figure it out. Right now, I'm just going to continue applying 
um, some products that I'm using for the scar and um, I'm using also this for the scar this is for healing and scar and this is for scarring and this is the cicatrice cur um, which they recommend this to me and if you have any other suggestions for remove the scar let me know um i usually wear my hair like that so i am not a lot of like bothered especially with makeup but i know this is gonna heal because if you see here in this little piece here which is is like you know it's really leaving i mean i just had two weeks basically so i cannot you know assume that i'm gonna have like thing like magic it's gonna go it's gonna go but it's nothing and there's so many just in case you're worried about that there's so many procedures i could do laser i could do anything that you know covers that and i want to do a little scrub before i leave on my lips this is the monet berry refined scrub um i'm not selling monades i used to sell monade but for, for personal reasons I stopped selling Monet, um, nothing bashing the, the company. Um, it was just like a personal decision. I went through, you know, situations with, with my group and whatnot. And the person that gave me the training lied a little and a point, but I'm going to do a video about it because I mean, I, I'm using their skincare, which I love. This is the scrub and it's like blueberry and everything, but I like to use it for my lips. <laughs> and it tastes like blueberry, by the way. And um, I like to use this on the lip. And then this scrub could be a scrub or a mask. Like if you leave it but more, it could be an exfoliating um, scrub or an actual exfoliating mask. Like, it'll, like, you could leave it. So, I am trying to, like, rebuild these lips again and all the skin again. After all that wrapping, my God, I was like a mummy. And, yeah. I'm going to record a video also talking about the brand and how I did amazing in two, three months. I nailed it, but it requires a teamwork. It requires a lot of work. And yeah, this is going to be for another video just in case you're like curious, like what happened with Monet? Like you're doing. And if you're interested in knowing like about Monet or how to get it, just let me know. I know some people that are that are selling the product and yeah i love this and i love the miracle water which i'm gonna purchase um but i'm gonna purchase this on the, i still have the card and i still have money on my card this is the thing that you you create and then you build and then you still get revenue somehow so i was still using the credit card from monet matter of fact yesterday i went shopping with the card and yeah um, and it took money out of the bank. Uh, so, I mean, out of the car, not out of the bank, out of the car. Um, so this is the good stuff. And nothing, I'm just gonna let you go to continue. I want to trim my hair now and whatnot. Uh, but, uh, this is part of the new look. I don't know if you want to be brown. I don't know if you want to be golden brown. I don't know if you want to be blonde. Like, I don't know what's going on, but the gray, it's growing like pretty not so like loud. And I can't color my hair into like six week. And this is the second week. And I go to work on Monday with the ball, with the jaw brown and stuff like that. But that's part of, that's part of the process. I just can't be in my house no more. I'm getting aggravated. Like I, I the other days I was just watching a video and I was like, oh, let me go to, today I'm going to the mall in Dubai. And I was watching the mall in Dubai, the tour and everything. And then, and I was like, now we're going to Paris. And, <laughs> you know, doing those things. But yeah, let me just let you go, continue here and see you on the next clip.
Hi. So guys, this is the day of the review. And I am here at the doctor's. Ready to, you know, um, review this stuff and see what's, you know, what's going on. I'm not gonna be able to record in there, but I'm so excited. After my outfit, but I'm gonna be so And oh, this is my last appointment. I need to go to the bathroom. So here as close we are 